pathology in pregnancy. This video will help you differentiate between acute fatty liver of pregnancy, preeclampsia with severe features, HELP syndrome, biliary colic, cholelithiasis, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I'll be talking about these diseases, their pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, diagnostics, and treatment and management. So let's start with acute fatty liver of pregnancy. The pathophysiology here is dysfunctional fatty acid oxidation, which leads to fatty infiltration of the liver in an acute fashion. So this leads to an acute fulminant liver failure. The symptoms here are jaundice, which will definitely be noticeable. They'll have right upper quadrant pain, hypoglycemia, which can result in altered mental status and confusion. Patients might also have nausea and vomiting. They can have a coagulopathy, which can result in DIC and bleeding. Hypoalbumin can lead to ascites as well. To make the diagnosis, you'll look at um, your labs. You'll primarily have pretty elevated liver enzymes as uh, probably three times the higher limit of normal. And you'll have leukocytosis, low platelets, low clotting factors. You'll have a DIC picture with a high PT and a high PTT on your coagulation studies. You'll also have profound hypoglycemia. That's what causes the altered mental status and confusion. You can have hypertension. You can do imaging to rule out other issues, to rule out like a stone or to rule out like acute cholangitis, um, but you don't really need to uh, if it's a very obvious presentation. The definitive um, test is a biopsy, which is not done in pregnancy, but that would be how you actually show the, the, the fatty infiltration of the liver. The treatment here is to stabilize mom and to deliver baby immediately. Next is preeclampsia with severe features. The pathophysiology of preeclampsia is complex. It involves abnormal placentation. Um, when, uh, the, when the placenta attaches, there are these spiral arteries that form, and in preeclampsia, the arteries are shallow, secondary to vasospasm or vasoconstriction. This results in oxidative stress, which can then result in placental hypoxia and ischemia. The signs and symptoms are not very specific, not super helpful here, but by definition, preeclampsia has hypertension. The patient might have right upper quadrant or epigastric pain. They might have edema. They might have headache along with that. The diagnosis for preeclampsia is a new hypertension diagnosed at 20 weeks gestation or later, and it needs to be pretty high. It needs to be above 140 systolic or above 90 diastolic. Uh, again, diagnosed at 20 weeks gestation or later. There are several criteria for severe features. Um, one criteria is elevated liver enzymes above two times the upper limit of normal. Uh, that would be the one that's related to the liver for, uh, for this video. Other features, other severe features include other signs of end organ damage, such as renal failure or um, headaches and uh, eventually seizures when you have full eclampsia. The treatment for preeclampsia with severe features is to deliver at 34 weeks. If there are no severe features present, you can deliver at 37 weeks. In general, moms should get magnesium sulfate to reduce that or to prevent seizures, and they can also get blood pressure control with labetalol, hydralazine, and nifedipine. Next is HELP syndrome. H-E-L-L-P is an acronym that stands for hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, low platelets. The pathophysiology here starts with preeclampsia, which then creates, so this placental hypoxia and ischemia uh, produces microthrombi in the portal system, which um, results in low hepatic perfusion, ischemia, hepatocellular injury. Eventually you get a swelling of the liver tissue um, and that distends the hepatic capsule, the Gleason's capsule. Um, and that swelling is painful. You can also have a deposition of platelet-rich thrombi in the capillaries, and that results in thrombocytopenia and um, the MAHA picture, the hemolytic anemia, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia picture. So signs and symptoms, as I mentioned, you'll have that hypertension, you'll have right upper quadrant pain from the distension of the hepatic capsule. You can have visual changes and headache, similar to the uh, preeclampsia with severe features, kind of nonspecific, but revolving around this hypertension issue. To make the diagnosis, you use the acronym that is HELP. So you'll have hemolysis, so the microangiopathic hemolytic anemia can result in high bilirubin, low haptoglobin, and uh, an anemia. It, you can have elevated liver enzymes, low platelets, um, maybe proteinuria, and um, you'll have the same hypertension, similar hypertension to what you have in, uh, in, in preeclampsia. The treatment here is immediate delivery. Again, you can use hydralazine for blood pressure and magnesium sulfate to prevent seizures. So these two can be kind of tricky and you might confuse them with acute fatty liver of pregnancy. Um, the thing to keep in mind to prevent you from doing that is that acute fatty liver of pregnancy has 
this like acute fulminant liver failure. So you'll see low clotting factors and profound hypoglycemia in acute fatty liver of pregnancy, whereas you wouldn't see it in these two, in HELP syndrome or in preeclampsia with severe features. So that's how you can kind of keep those straight. Next, these last three are kind of lower acuity issues. We have biliary colic and cholelithiasis. This is not a disease specific to pregnancy by any means, but uh, the pathophysiology of uh, the disease can be related to pregnancy and pregnancy can exacerbate uh, these conditions. So pregnancy is a high estrogen state and estrogen uh, increases the amount of uh, biliary cholesterol excretion, which can form stones. Progesterone is high in pregnancy as well, and that decreases gallbladder motility. So pregnancy kind of predisposes you to biliary colic and cholelithiasis. Signs and symptoms are right upper quadrant, epigastric pain. The pain can be postprandial with fatty foods. Person goes out, eats a cheeseburger, has pain right afterwards. Um, pain can be recurrent. Diagnostics here can be imaging. Right upper quadrant ultrasound is usually used, um, which is good because CT would be bad for the baby. Uh, this would show stones or sludge that's blocking the, uh, the gallbladder with gallbladder inf in inflammation, potentially. The treatment for this is pain control. Um, ideally, you would control the issue until they deliver the baby and do a cholecystectomy afterwards. Um, but if it's recurrent and complicated during pregnancy, you can do the cholecystectomy while mom is pregnant. Second to last one intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. The pathophysiology here is, it's not really satisfying. Uh, what, what I read online, it's multifactorial. It's related to hormones and genetic factors and environmental factors. Essentially, these moms present during the third trimester with just generalized itching um, across their body. It's usually worse in the hands and feet. They can also have jaundice. They can also have right upper quadrant pain, but the predominant symptom is this itching, uh, worse in the hands and feet. The diagnosis is made with a high bile acid. Um, that's what's making them itchy. They'll also have a high elk foss, a high direct bilirubin, um, high liver enzymes, but kind of in the mildly high range, less than 100 usually, so not nearly as high as you would see in acute fatty liver pregnancy. The treatment for this is ursodeoxycholic acid. That's first line. You can also try to treat the itching with antihistamines and cholestyramine. These moms can deliver at 37 weeks at term. Lastly, another disease that's not uh, unique to pregnancy. This is non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease. The pathophysiology here is related to insulin resistance, which results in unregulated triglyceride synthesis, peripheral lipolysis, and lipid uptake into the liver. So this is um, something that people with metabolic syndrome get. So these people are overweight, they have obesity, they have usually diabetes, um, and they have insulin resistance. This results in fatty changes to the liver parenchyma, and as I mentioned, it's associated with all these other metabolic syndrome um, cluster of conditions. The signs and symptoms here aren't really much. This is usually asymptomatic. The patient might have hepatomegaly, the patient might have minimal right upper quadrant pain, but that's usually not the case. Um, this is sometimes also often seen like incidentally on an ultrasound or other imaging test. Um, the diagnosis can be made with steatohepatitis, so you'll have high liver enzymes, usually in a ratio where the AST is less than the ALT, so your ratio will be less than one. Your uh, bile acid should be normal here. You'll have hyperechoic texture on ultrasound. And as I mentioned, sometimes it's an incidental finding. Um, the patient might not even have these symptoms. Um, you can exclude other causes. If it was an alcoholic fatty liver disease, you would expect the AST to ALT ratio to be two to one, so pretty different from, um, from the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I think it's also called NAFLD. I've seen it, N-A-F-L-D. People just abbreviate that um, to NAFLD. The treatment here is lifestyle changes, diet, exercise. Um, if it's a big problem and the person is severely overweight, BMI over um, 35, you can consider bariatric surgery. That would, of course, happen after pregnancy. So this was just a short video on liver pathology and pregnancy. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for listening.